Hello, it's Glenn, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Ed. This is episode 265. Oh, whew. hello. How are we all going? Another night at Aussie Tech Ed's Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Queensland time. So that's Queensland time, 8.30 for New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, and whatever it else that is in the other places. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the lounge once again. The lounge is filled up, just squeeze up, just uh, all, all move to the right. Let, uh, let some more people in, please, over there, live.thesecrethub.com. You can also call into the show live on Skype, Aussie Techhead, and listen to us audio only on the Shoutcast system. Live video, obviously, coming out now while we're live, but you can watch the recorded live video at youtube.com slash the secret hub and look for episode 265 of course or the latest one whatever's your fancy we'll look at for our paper that comes out twice a day paper.aussietechheads.com.au and um that's about it thanks to the pre-show entertainment te tech webcast and uh techau.tv thank you very much okay what is going on welcome to eric hello eric hello sir how do you do I am not too bad, thank you. Now, uh, also, we might as well at the top of the show, just uh, Will is not on tonight, he's done his back in and apparently can't sit for too long. He's, um, he, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's used up his uh, sitting quota uh, on the toilet and there's no more room uh, for the show. <laughs> so no, no potatoes for Will. Stop the potatoes, Will. You'll do yourself oh, an injury. All right. Now, what else has been going on? Uh, what's happened with your week? Have you had any exciting things, Eric, happen to you? Oh, uh, look, no, I've got... Uh, let me see. What have I done this week? Well, I think I've sorted out the mixer, as you can tell from the audio quality. Yes. Um, that's coming through tonight. No echo. Uh, levels are okay. Uh, lounge room would be screaming if it wasn't okay. <laughs> so they've been silent, so that means it must be okay. Yep. Um, what else? I've, did, we, I've did we say last week... the mixer, week... tried to get my... Yeah, sorry, I was, just, I was just going to say, did we say last week that you, you we did, I think, you did get a new mixer, a Mackie set up, and now... Yes, but we couldn't get it set up because I didn't have the mix minus and the connections were a little bit backward, but I've sorted all that out now. Yes, it, it takes a long time to get things right and a lot of, um, a lot of yes. uh, input from professionals <laughs> and a lot of YouTube Well, watching. I must thank Glenn. I must thank Glenn for oh, spending, no. um, what, uh, what night was that? Was that Thursday night? Oh, okay. No, I wouldn't have made it. After the show oh, yes, last it week? Was. Yes, yes, it was, yes. Yeah, oh, no, I was, I was, more, uh, I yeah. was more meaning the guys at your local place. And uh, they, they were helping oh, you they out. Oh, they, mate, they, weren't, they were no help, mate. You were more help than they were. <laughs> oh, Google, just... YouTube, and Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's all fixed. And it just goes to show, uh, if you're going to do a podcast or whatever, just the, the importance of a decent mixer. Because as you can see now, um, Eric, before on a, I don't know, what was it? It was a probably a... Hundred and two hundred dollar mixer before was it or something? The the bay no, ringer. No, it was, would have been a seventy eighty dollar mixer. Oh, okay, there you go. And now the bay ringer. And mm. now I've got a what a three hundred dollar jobby and just brings it Correct. all together. Yeah, brings it all together. Correct. So, so very important. Obviously, as you can see from the live stream, he's got a very nice microphone as well and a new stand. Um, so that looks. He's, yep. he's just got the professional setup. So that's good. And hopefully, everything will continue yep. to yep. Um, sound good. Now, also, yes, I, indeed. Now, you're also moving ahead with the internet, I hear. What's that? I had, well, I got on the phone to Telstra during the week to sort out my dedicated connection to use just for this show, and it's just no good. So, what I've decided to do is um, I'm going to cancel a contract. I'll pay the exit fee, um, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not as much as I thought it would be. So that's not too bad. Um, and I've joined Optus Cable for my dedicated connection with mm. the premium pack. So I get two megabits theoretically through two megabits up. And I think it averages around 1.5, 1.6. Yes. So Now you educated me good. through the week as well with all this because I'd never heard of terms did like... Did I? Yeah, you did. I've never really heard of terms like doxus and all this sort of stuff. Oh, really? Not, not right. really. Okay, Doxus. <laughs> no, so I did a... Doxus 3.0. I, I did a little bit of reading up on that, and Doxus 3.0 is the latest Doxus <laughs> that the, the internet people want to use. Now, uh, funnily yes. enough, funnily enough, now I don't know if you've seen this, Eric, if this, or if, if you have seen it, had this upset you or whatever. I don't think it would. But Telstra has, has, has plans to upgrade their cable network. 
Did you see that? Oh, he's got it. <laughs> he had seen it. And so, did you think that you might have preempted things by by? But you, you you're going to ditch the ADSL, aren't you? I'm ditching the ADSL. I've got Telstra cable already, and I'm going to ditch the ADSL in favour of Optus cable. Optus cable we just use for this show, which mm. is recording, uploading, streaming, etc., etc., etc. The cable. The Telstra cable is used. It's the family connection, which all the kids plug into via their uh, hardwired connections in their bedrooms. Yes, yes. How lucky are they? Oh, very lucky. I think. Um, look, I used to hardwire the house. You know, as 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 I as the kids come along, I used to hardwire their rooms. But look, well, you know, as computers come along, I hardwired, but I gave up. I didn't like getting in the roof. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's all wide now. That's why I got a professional to do it. Yeah, I know. I do have a got a nice cheap bloke. He gets in the roof for like sixty bucks, like for five hours. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get, he, get all the vermin from the roof as well. Oh, look, this poor bastard. He's so cheap. He is so cheap that he was up in there for oh, an hour or something. He's doing this and doing that, and he comes down. I said, "How much, mate?" And he goes, "Oh, probably thirty-five bucks." <laughs> I go, "No, nah, come on." Oh. I said, "Here, look, have an extra ten. Go and buy yourself a beer." He wouldn't take it. He said, "No." No, 35, that's it, 35. I went, okay, thank you. I said, I got him back a lot more times. <laughs> so every time I've got stuff for, for the roof, I call, what's his name? Um, oh, I forget his name. Something. Um, Archie, something, something with a, something like that. Anyway, oh, bloke, you know, doing the doing the right thing. But anyway, Telstra, that's my, that's my first story of the night. Uh, Telstra, the upgrade is going to see homes in Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide and the Gold Coast. Woohoo! Uh, with an upgrade on the Doxus 3 HFC cable broadband standard, boosting downstream downstream speeds uh, from a peak of 30 megs, which they are at the moment, to 100 megabits a second. Uh, now, the chief executive, David Tootie, uh, he said that the, more, that the national upgrade of the system will likely start second week of December. So, um, yeah, good time to start, I reckon. Don't worry about Christmas. But anyway, as long as it starts, that's the main thing. The Doxus 3 uh, cable uh, networks could theoretically achieve a speed of 160 meg down and 120 meg up. That's... Um, Correct. That's pretty fast. But actually, but individual user it's speeds... It's out of control. It is out of control. But individual user speeds uh, would be pegged at about 100 meg down and 2 <laughs> meg up. But it's still um, pretty good. I'd, l I'd love to get my fingers good on it. Good enough some. for me. I'd, yes, and uh, and luckily enough, I have got the cable sitting at the at the wall of the house of the premises, and so as soon as that little sucker is upgraded, um, yeah, goodbye, You're wrong. AD crap L. Um, yeah, did you have? Yes, any, that's right. <laughs> did you have any more on uh, on that story? I have got a couple of things more if you wanted well, to round it out. I think it's just interesting that um, I think it's just interesting that um, they're doing this in light of the fact that. They've signed up to handle to hand their pits over to the NBN. Mm. Now, to me, that says one of two things: that they don't have any faith in the government to complete this NBN in the time that they said they would. Well, yeah. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, number two, they are hedging their bets, which they have to to remain competitive. They have yes. to hedge their bets because they that's have to the, hedge the, that, that that the government will. Um, that the government, the incoming government, and let's make no bones about it, the incoming Liberal government will be incoming mm. very shortly. You don't think it might be um, um, Bob might, Catter's m Australia? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to interrupt your role. Sorry, keep going. The incoming Liberal Party. Um, the incoming Liberal Party, within the next six months, they probably are thinking, well, what if they cancel this? What if they mm. roll everything back and we're going to be left in the lurch? Yes. So they are taking out an insurance policy to make sure that this doesn't happen. Now, but it would says they here? Would they be left in the lurch though? Like, what well, that just means? But, but if the MBN did cancel, what does that mean? They just start. Why wouldn't they just start the upgrade later? Because I don't know if, if people don't know when when Telstra. You've got to remain one step. Of, you've got to remain. Well, it's a competitive advantage. You think mm. about it. Everyone's on ADSL two. Everyone's hanging their hats on the ABN, uh, the NBN, and then suddenly it doesn't go ahead. Yeah. If they've got the competitive advantage because they've already got, yes. hey, we've got 100 megabits over here, mm -hmm. they'll go, you know what? See you later, IINet, TPG, yeah. on the net, um, internode, 
Optus, yeah. whoever else. Yeah. And I say, look, at these guys have got just as good. We've been waiting for this. Now Telstra are offering it. Why wouldn't you jump? But apparently in so Melbourne... It's a competitive advantage. In Melbourne where this is already They've rolled already out. They've already got it. They've had it for 12 months. Yeah. yeah, and this is why this has been put on the back burner for the, for us. And apparently, like uh, it's estimated, only like a thousand, a thousand homes got this, which is hard to believe. You think that everyone would be jumping at it? So, but if that's the if that's the situation, like okay, like, but wouldn't you think that if no one, if Telstra's had they'll this, drop, for, they'll drop the price. But if Telstra's had this for twelve months, this in Melbourne, and then so did, why is, did the government actually look at this and say, well, does anyone actually want this speed? You know, like, does anyone want this? Want this oh. a higher speed, you know, because it, no one wants it. But but why aren't they taking it up in Melbourne? Is it because they? Just... Well, see, I don't know. But well, you know, Melbourne's Melbourne's Mexico. Mm. Let's face it. <laughs> but no, tell... I don't think no one wants this speed. But it's but it's going to become a standard. Yeah. You know, just like for years, fifteen hundred was a standard, and then ADSL two plus actually ADSL two came in, which then eight megabits became a standard. Mm. And everyone just migrated slowly onto that. And then ADA, ADSL 2 Plus became a standard, and it was 15 to 20 became mm. the standard. Well, there's and a. This, they just, what they're doing is they're just setting a standard. There's a quote in the Australian, actually, from Malcolm Turnbull. I don't know if you saw this one or where you got your story from, but his quote is It is clear from this announcement that the industry is starting to factor into their business plans the delays of rolling out the NBN and the distinct likelihood that it will never be completed. But anyway, yeah. no, I agree with what he's saying, and it's not that it's not a look. He he's he might be saying it with political sort of you know connotations, mm. but my thing is it won't be completed because they don't want to complete it. It'll be it'll be it'll be a non-complete because the people running the show are useless. Mm. You know, it, the, up a few paragraphs it says here um, the upgrade to its hybrid hybrid fiber coaxial network, which passes two point seven million homes will not interfere with Telstra's contractual obligations to decommission its network when the $36 billion NBN is completed in 2021. Oh. I'm not waiting to 2021 to get freaking NBN. Yeah, that's a joke. That's no a joke. Way. That's a joke. That's like another this is 10 why Telstra's years. Got Telstra. Yeah, that's another 10 years. They announced it in 2007. Mm. It's yeah. take, what, 14 years? Well, they're 14 do- years? They're doing one ounce at a time. <laughs> <laughs> they're crazy. Yeah, that's right. They, 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 they're going, we'll do this street, then we'll have a ciggy. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll do this street, then we'll have a beer. But for those then we'll that... do this street and we'll have a, cup, we'll have a four-hour cup of tea. <laughs> but for those that are, of you that aren't on uh, anywhere near cable, which, which is unfortunate, but Telstra's also begun upgrading 2,000 street cabinets nationally this month uh, to expand the ADSL to plus capacity in some areas. This move is widely seen by analysts and observers as Telstra hedging its bet on the NBN deal not coming to fruition. So that's, what I, that's, that's what I just said. That's right. They're hedging their bets. And I can't wait because I've already got the 35 megabits down and all it is is it'll be a flick of a switch and um, I'll probably need a new cable modem because modems have got the firmware in it that says either DOCSIS 1, DOCSIS 2 or DOCSIS 3. Yeah. I'll need a modem that's DOCSIS 3. But that's okay. It they, tells you they... they no Ninety nine dollars, you know, whoopie doo. Yeah, look, right? I think for, for no the problem. for the average mum and dad checking their shares, they probably won't won't do it. But for people doing stuff like this, for doing podcasts and even video conferencing, and like well, Eric just, in your business, yeah, you do yeah, and the, you know, streaming. How mm. how often now are you on your media center, for example? How often now are you watching movies via the internet? Lots of people. Mm. I know I am. Yep. And yep. speaking of which, Google, uh, sorry, YouTube has just released YouTube dot com forward slash movies. Yeah. In Australia. Oh, okay. Oh, right. So, what sort of? So, if you go to that link now, people, we can have a look at that. I will actually have a look there now. What is it? YouTube. Uh, YouTube. YouTube dot movies dot com forward slash movies. All right. Let's have a look at this. All right. There we go. Oh, yes. But what sort of movies are they? They're nothing that I've seen in a. You know, nothing. Well, oh, they're slowly they're slowly rolling them out. Yeah, right, but at the moment there's a lot of documentaries and they're all free. The it's finger. Rentals, they're, they're slowly, they've had it in America for a while, but they're just slowing. They're just rolling it out now in Australia. There's one. There's a beauty. Ten fingers of death. That sounds like a good one. Oh yeah, soccer mum yeah. heard of that one as, as a comedy. Yep. Um, when Karen met Karen, never. The heard second of that. assassination of JFK. Lots of documentaries. 
Hmm. Um, Already? You know, you use this by categories. You go to new release, new releases. There you go. What's a new release? Where's the new releases? Uh, uh, crime, Just click on romance, categories, science fiction. Woohoo! Categories, categories, categories. Up the top here, new releases. Here we go. Let's have a look at new releases. Desperate to survive. Power of justice. Lovers Creek. Home. We all. Oh yeah. I. Give me some Steven Seagal movies. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm sure. Look, the movies all just they'll continue to be. Um, uh, the 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 they'll catalog just keep will be increased. They yeah. just keep adding to it. Yeah, but I, like I watch the movies, uh, or stuff uh, for, on the boxy. You know, like podcasts and all that stuff. Stream a lot oh, of that. Oh, Bruce Lee. Oh, look at this. Bruce Lee, the dragon lives. Oh, oh way to go. Way to go. The Battle of Britain. <laughs> the abortion pill. Oh, the titles they just keep coming. They never stop. Oh, another one. A going down under. A randy adolescent who lost his manhood in a passionate tryst with a, with a mincing machine Ooh. gets a second shot at being whole again when a prominent porn star dies and doctors attempt a daring transplant. <laughs> now, with a little help from his friends, John O. Smith might get back in the swing of things while he's still at his sexual peak, starring Ostentatious. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's going to oh, be a beauty. I'm that on. Uh, save that for later. Put that in yeah, your favourites list. <laughs> yes, yeah, but that's what I mean, like list. because you, like, because I watch a few of the Twit podcasts. I'm just watching podcasts, you know. And then yeah, you, you soon find that your your bandwidth starting to chew, and sometimes you get a bit of a bit of a static thing going on, bit of a buffering. But anyway, yeah, that's right. But uh, keeping with Google, that's good. so yeah, yeah. So that that's um that's good news. Like, but as you said, like these things, it's all it's all starting to come together. You know, with the TVs you buy now, they're all internet enabled and connected and. Yeah, it's all coming together. Yes. Well, actually, uh, that's, uh, sorry to interrupt, but for for example, my um, my sister and her husband went. Uh, they were looking for a TV for their place. They've got a, they've got a thirty two inch Sony, which is a bit too small, and um, and uh, so they went looking for a, a, a system on the weekend. And they're so cheap now. They went to David Jones, hmm. and they got a a Dolby five point one surround sound setup. Yep. Um. Then a 46-inch Sony internet TV. Yes. Plus an iPod docking stereo system thingy, you know, like a, 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 a um, what do you call it, a, a, a Bang, Bang Olufsen or a Bose or something. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. The whole lot was two thousand. The whole lot was two grand, $2,000. Yeah, right. And all this Sony stuff, it's all uh, this DNLA compatible or whatever it is, you know, that's all got that stuff in it. Yeah. That's, and um, this stuff is it's it's picture picture frame thin, yeah. You know, they hang it on the wall and it looks like a picture frame. It is mm. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. Stuff so, like I saw a plasma TV in the uh, like the good guys or something on their in their catalog, fifty inch, six hundred bucks. Oh, you know, yeah, LG. Yeah, they're all pretty you cheap. Know, not not some not LG's some LG's um, not bad. Opus brand or or you know Sansui or something. But um, yeah, LG. Like, admittedly, oh, it, so <laughs> it, well, admittedly, it wasn't uh, full HD. But you know, who gives a toss, really? Unless you do. No, no, you'd go full HD, mate. Nah, got to go full HD. What for? Unless you, you do, watch you a do, you do, you do. Because I told you so. <laughs> well, obviously, if it, if if the if it's cost effective and it's only a couple of dollars more, you would. But uh, but you only only get full yeah. HD if you got a Blu-ray player. I don't have one of them. Do you have a Blu-ray? Oh, I do. It's called the PS3. Oh yeah, yep, that'll do it. Yeah, PS3 will do. Uh, but anyway, moving uh, on to some more Google stories. I will Google. I think I had another Google story here. Did I or not? Probably. I I got one here. At, uh, last week's Google Music launch in the US, the company disclosed that more than two hundred million Android devices to date have been activated. That's a few, isn't it? Two hundred million. It's a lot. That's a hell of a lot. Uh, with the current rate of activation sitting on 550,000 new Android devices switched on every day. Uh, Apple has, in comparison... Every Apple, day. Yeah, but you know what? 450 of them have got freaking malware. Yeah. <laughs> Apple, in comparison, has 250 million iOS devices in the world. Yeah, look, um, look I've still got problems with mine, eh? Like, it, it's, it's yeah, because better. it's a piece of crap. <laughs> Android... Hate to upset anyone here. Android is crap. Yeah, it, it's getting there. <laughs> we'll, we'll say that it's getting there. It's getting there. Um, now it's look, just hopeless. 
Yeah, well, another thing, like, another story that came in today was uh, Windows XP. I can't believe this thing is still... Isn't this thing dead yet? It's still... Is it still... Why is it still going? it was. Yeah. Um, the, the software... So, Microsoft has said, again, I don't know why this keeps coming up every two seconds, but they're going to stop supplying security patches and hot fixes for all versions of XP. whoop be doo They've been doing this for the last 20 years. Well, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Ever since they made it, they've gone, ah, oh, we're stopping this. Um, so, yeah, they're going to stop all the batches and hotfixes for all versions of XP on April 8, 2014. Why are we hearing about this now? Potentially making it vulnerable to issues that may arise after that time. So, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. What is, what is Microsoft doing? I think I had another Microsoft story hanging around here somewhere. Uh, something about Windows 8. Now, yeah, we all, you did. We all know. Did you have any stories? I don't want to um, take all the... All the good one? No, no, you keep going. I'll, I'll jump in, mate. Don't okay. Worry. All right. Uh, now, Windows 8. Now, that Microsoft have um, you know, put a lot of work into this. They want to push it to all the platforms. Uh, Windows 8, same thing. So the install is going to be cutting it down to 11 clicks. So that's uh, not a still, bad thing. It's still thing. five but it's still five oh, clicks too many. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Dead set. Because, like, um, apparently it had 60 screens as well, you know, on the... Oh, on, it's on, pathetic. Like, that, They're hopeless. I can't understand. And for the life of me, for the life of me, I can't understand why they can't have a, an install where, you, as, as Eric just said, you click it one, or you set it up, I don't care if, it, if you have to click the thing 50 times, but you click it 50 times and then you can just bugger off for two hours or however long it is. Yeah, but you don't, you don't have to hang around and keep placing yes, 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 yes. Yes, you've got to keep coming back, you know. And you you think know like, all you should do? You, you put it in, it comes up, you press install. Then mm. it asks you for your name. Yeah, but do it all at the start. Details in. Yeah. All in the one screen, right? Install one screen, second screen, your name. Yeah. And the and the twenty five digit product key, you press install, you walk away. Yes. That's it. Yep. Because the problem is, I do walk away, and then you come back, and it's probably. Oh, no, you come back. <laughs> it's gone two percent. Two hours later, and it's only ten percent done. Yeah, and it says, "Oh, input your um, where, where, your location or something," and you go. Argh. But anyway, I know you can do it. You know, you can set up so it does it all you automatically. Do it. If you've got Apple a thousand machines to do it, but you know, but the little home user. They're just doing it like this. But um, apparently the most annoying feature of previous ones is the non-automation of it. That's, that's So they've tried to automate it a bit more. Uh, installations to be key to the Windows 8 uptake. So they reckon that if they do this, this is going to be... But yeah, as this story goes on, it's going on about the installation. is actually going to be... They're making it easier to upgrade. Right. So so you know how you, um, you, you upgrade or you say you're on Windows 7. You put the disk in to yeah, Windows you 7. Upgrade to Windows 8, you, yeah. You're upgrading while you're... upgrade or custom. Oh, give me a break. I hate it. I don't do it like that. Give me a clean install. If no, I'm I gonna, wipe the whole drive. Yeah. Clean install every time. If I'm going to go to the trouble of upgrading the OS, I want a clean install. I don't want little DLL files flung from here to bloody Sydney. I want them, <laughs> I want them bloody nice and the only ones I need. I want them... That's all I want. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, yes. the Windows 8 is designed to work on all PCs running 7 as well as running Vista and XP. Well, I'd hope so. <laughs> if it's going to run on um, XP. Could you imagine Could you imagine the piece of pus experience it would be <laughs> to upgrade Vista to Windows oh, 8? Could you... you imagine the blue screen of death you would get every <laughs> click? It's the blue screen of pus. <laughs> That's what it should be. Oh, my God. Why don't oh. you just call it Windows Pus? Yeah. The memory, version 8. The memory dump. I hate that. You know, when you get the blues green, you go, oh, oh saving the memory dump to the file or whatever. Once, it you, once, you, go, once you go Mac, you never go back. The That's st- it. The, uh, the streamlined setup kicks off inside the older operating system by running the DVD or the web download, which will automatically preload the 25-digit uh, um, activation product key. Oh, if it wasn't for that, it'd be 12 clicks. Well, true. That's right. <laughs> Users upgrading from Vista. Oh, hang on. Users upgrading from Vista won't be able to bring their apps with them. So Vista must be just the clunker. What a shame. Yeah. But we'll be able to keep settings and personal data. Those upgrading from XP won't be able to bring apps or settings either. But anyway, who cares about XP? Microsoft, I don't think... That's I've got right. one XP machine in the in the house. I, I don't have any. Yep. 
Kim's got an old XP machine. I don't think it could handle too much else. It's pretty old, pretty slow. She's complaining about it, but it goes fast enough for her. Microsoft oh, also it's all has, the malware. Nah, no, nah, it's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. I set it up with all the security yeah. uh, initiatives. <laughs> Microsoft also said it had improved the file transfer system for upgrades to Windows 8. Rather than moving each into file, it moves entire folders. So I guess the files have to go with them. Well, yeah. it's about time. It's only 2011. Yeah, drastically reducing the number of file operations required. This means we can link to the actual data on the disk in the transport location without having to physically move the file, which has a significant performance gain. But anyway, <laughs> clean install. I am yeah, never, sure. ever going to upgrade yeah. like that. That is crap. Pus, crap. Yeah, that's pus. Pus. Upgrade is pus. <laughs> that's right. Now, um, now let's move Windows on. Windows pus. Windows pus, all right. Now, just here's, here's another one just as a bit of a warning. Should sound the alarm bell. But uh, look, I get a couple of these every week or every now and then, you know. Scams. Everyone, everyone probably uh, knows there's a lot of scams going around the joint. But I've got this one out because this seems to be affecting yep. um, the tech people, you know, or whatever. It's a tech-related story, so that's why I pulled it out. Uh, online classified ads for smartphones, tablet devices and other small electronic items uh, people are paying for and they are never being delivered. So you've got to be careful. So the warning signs. <laughs> <laughs> so the warning signs. If you're going to be scammed, smartphone, tablet or other electronic devices advertised on an online classified site at a low price. That's an alarm bell. Often lower than comparable items advertised on the same website. In many cases, the scam ad will offer one of the same product for free. Oh, yeah. And the scammers may claim yeah, to be right. authorised resellers and offer 100% genuine items. Yeah. The scam ads may mislead you to believe that the seller is operating out of Australia, an Australian capital city. However, they are really overseas. And all that happened. I did that. I bought, because uh, I, I was uh, looking for a copy of Dreamweaver, because I like to buy sort of like old, if I'm looking for something, I'll buy an old version, so you know you don't have to pay through the tooth to get it. And uh, so I jumped on, oh, where was it? I looked on eBay, there's nothing on there. Then I jumped on quick sales, I think, .com.au. Oh, what a pirate hut, hut that is. And anyway, I saw um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw Trainweaver somewhere, yeah, right. I, was, um, I think it was like $70 for CS3, you know. And I thought, well, okay, that's, you know, that's a couple of editions back. That's a couple of uh, versions back, I'll... I'll grab that one, you know, seventy bucks. Oh, actually, I did. I made him an offer. I said, "How about 40? And he goes, "Yeah, righto." And I, I looked where he was, and he was in Sydney. And then I even Google, Google, um, Google mapped him to look at his house. <laughs> I couldn't find it, but I right. tried. I tried, but anyway, I couldn't find it. Probably now because we know it came from overseas. It came. I eventually got it, and it was all wrapped up. Original, or looked like you know, really good copy. It looked like the original thing. And I thought, oh, what well, this might have been just been you know a bit of a bar, a um, what do they call them? Bulk license key edition or whatever they call them. Yep. And, uh, but anyway, uh, put it in. Yeah, it worked fine until it did an upgrade and then it got locked out. And so I went back to PayPal and said, got scammed, you know, pirated version. And I got my money back. Got 40 bucks back. So that was a good, good. outcome. Yeah, good outcome. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see that PayPal recovered that for me because um, that's good. So always use PayPal. That's a, that's a happy story. Uh, the scammer may not have a website, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, look, there's show notes around. Or just go to the scamwatch.gov.au site if you want to see the rest of those and how to protect yourself. So there you go. Yes. There you go. Yes. The old scam watch. You can get an um, email of scams so you can keep up to date with them so you're never, you're never caught out by these little scam artists. All right. Yes. Now, yes. here's an interesting story. Australia Post is... Um, on the way to offering telecommunication services. Ooh, I'll read the story. What does that mean? Telecommunications industry commentators are hailing the revelation that Australia Post is planning to enter the telecoms industry in a major way, with former high-ranking, with a former high-ranking Optus executive at the helm. News of the move was broken by Communications Day, which says sees. The move, see, which the move sees Ospost already dabbling in e-commerce via its delivery service for goods ordered online, seeking to diversify further away from traditional postal services and into newer communications offerings. So what they're going to do is they're mulling a push into broader communication services with an uh, blah, 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 with obvious opportunity developing as the MBN continues to roll out because they've got, you know, obviously they've got massive distribution 
Yeah. They've got um, oh, yeah. in their warehouses, they've yeah. got logistic advance because they've got all their trucks and they're a trusted brand. Mm. And they have they have payment systems as well, obviously. The Australian Post, but you can pay anything at Australian Post. It's fantastic. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. That's why all the old bags go there and pay their bloody phone bill and I scream at them because I just want to buy stamps. <laughs> so get out of the way and pay your phone bill online, you know, <laughs> bitty. Yeah. So, 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 so it doesn't. Go on. I was going to say, so so when you say they're putting, pushing into the telecommunications, um, so what they're, they're, what's the, they've announced that a senior officer executive will be joining its retail ranks next week. So they must be... How, yes. So, so the company has appointed a Ma, Maha Krishna Palai. Maha Krish, Krishna Palai. Yeah, Krishna Palai at the helm. Yeah, and what are they actually doing? Uh, it currently sells SIM cards and prepaid mobiles from its branches. The first aim is really to grow the agency model, looking at what the opportunities are in the broadband space. Oh, right, eh? so it might, it's going to be. Yeah, like, I think they're going to they're going to grow. To, they're going to be agents for you know they still are agents now for Vodafone, Optus, Telstra. You know you can buy SIM cards there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah. I think eventually they're going to go the probably the Crazy John's model, get their own network up and running, or Virgin, or something like that. Yeah. So they'll have their own mobile. They, they always start mobile. They always start with mobile phones because that's the. The, Not the, the easiest. That's probably the wrong term, but it's the how to get into the um, market. Sort probably of thing. it's easiest to get in. It's a convenient. They've already got a, got the model there, and then mm. from there, they'll start probably offering broadband ADSL or cable. You know, maybe they'll start selling on selling yeah. Telstra's cable or Optus's cable. Well, I think that's exactly like that. That's and exactly you know what? Right. I think it's good. If they do that, that's good. Good more competition. Yes, yes, that's right. So, yeah, so uh, with the uh, MBM Co building and operating its new network and plenty of companies selling wholesale access to the MBN service, Australia Post could in the future sell its own broadband services under what is known as white labelling arrangements. There you go. That's what it's called. whoop doo whoop doo da mm. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take a quick break, real quick. Yep. And uh, we'll be back before we can say, uh, hold the phone, Grandma, Dad's fallen over the... Pool ladder. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Um, welcome back, everyone. Aussie Tech Heads episode 265. Eric and Glenn with you this episode. Well, Eric, what uh, what do you know? What have you been listening to? Or because I know you're a, you're a freakish with Audible.com. What have you been uh, into this well, week? I finished the Rob. I finished the Rob Lowe book that I spoke about last week. Oh, how how would that, that go? Week. Yes, was that you enjoyed that? that was one? Very good. Yeah, it's very good. Very interesting. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not. I don't get starstruck mm. at all. Um, you know, with the whole oh my god, he's famous. I don't care about nah, any of that shit. No, nah, who cares? But you, no, I don't care. He's just a human being. He does his mm. job. He does it well, and that's that. Um, but his story was very interesting quite moving in parts you know he, he's been through a lot more than uh, um, than you think but because we don't see all that stuff yeah um but yeah very good very good so that and was last week's book and i finished it this week right and you finished the steve jobs i have finished the steve jobs and i know you you have not no but i've been trying to no. I, i've progressed yes I've pro- i haven't progressed with the book have you? but i've progressed with trying to sync my itunes Playlist oh, to my see, Android. This is the thing, mate. <laughs> mate, see, it shouldn't take you. You shouldn't have to do this. I know. Oh, tell me. Look, just, I you know. shouldn't have to do this with the Android. It's just so freaking. Uh, let's. That's another. Look, my blood pressure is going to go up. People just don't learn. <laughs> look, I, look, I, look, I know. There's a. I know. I could probably get a music app uh, for Android and do the whole playlist thing in that. In that, but what's ha- in in this house? Every, dicking around. Everyone else is doing iTunes. I've got iTunes set up on the PC. I've got playlists set up and everything. All I want to do is blah, blah, blah. So anyway, look, I downloaded the old faithful um, double twist app. You know what? It yeah. wouldn't work, right? Not it's it worked. Crap. It worked on the actual phone. It just wouldn't work on the PC. Like It just came up with yeah, um, library errors. Like, give me a break. So that was one yeah. night, because I only tried that's, one thing a night. That's Android for you. Yeah, that's but Android. anyway, but anyway, look, it's, it's starting to come together. It's starting to. i just got to find the right combination of 
apps and uh, we'll be Mate, away. By the time you find the right combination, the iPhone 5 will be out and you'll go, you know what, I don't care anymore. Just give me the freaking iPhone. Yeah, well, look, look I've, got, done with. I've got probably a year to go on the contract and uh, by that time the iPhone 5 might be out. And um, oh, look, it'll, definitely, it'll definitely be out. Don't worry about that. Look, I'm not. I'm not a. As you know, I'm not an Apple fanboy or nothing like that. But I just mean, I just want stuff to start working. Hey, eh? I'm just, just thinking of it. Yeah, that's right. You just want something that works. You, you know, you, you're too busy to spend an afternoon or yep. an evening or an or a complete night going. Let's see if I can sync this across to here. I mean, for mm. God's sake, you should just plug the thing in, press sync, and it's done. And it's done. That's right. But um, you know? but. <laughs> But anyway, who's controlling this internet? Who is it? Who controls the internet? <laughs> Illusions of a Borderless World oh. by Jack Goldsmith and Tim Wu. Tim Wu wrote The Master Switch. We, we, we spoke about this uh, a few months ago, The Rise and Fall of Information Empires. Remember we spoke about that? Mm, yes. That's a very good book. You've got to get that out. That's a fantastic book. Well, after Steve um, Jobs, I might. So this is about... What's that? After <laughs> Steve, you get the twist working. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I've this I've time next the... year you'll be going. Be... I'm halfway through the book. <laughs> Android's really nice. I've ditched it. I've, I've, did, I've ditched the twist. But anyway, yeah. Sorry. Who controls the internet? Jack Goldsmith. Who controls the internet? Now, the publisher summary reads as this: Is the internet erasing, erasing national borders? Who's really in control of what's happening on the net? Internet engineers, rogue programmers, the United Nations, or powerful countries? In this provocative new book. When I say it was released in 2009, so it's not that, not that new. Jack Goldsmith and Tim Wu tell the fascinating story of the Internet's challenge to governmental rule in the 1990s and the ensuing battles with governments around the world. It is a book about the fate of one idea, that the Internet might liberate us forever from government, borders, and even our physical selves. Whoa, how do you like that? Our physical selves. How do you like that, eh? <laughs> that sounds all that's hot and heavy. And yeah, uh, I'm going to play a little grab, so uh, listen up, people. Here we go. Soon after Judge Gomez's decision, Yahoo's resistance to geographical screening began to wane. In June 2001, Yahoo announced a deal with Akamai, a content delivery company, to use the firm's geographical identification technology to deliver geographically targeted advertising in order to increase advertising relevance. One of Yahoo's lawyers, Mary Worth, had the unenviable job of explaining the firm's contradictions on GeoID. We argued that it's not a 100% accurate solution for the French court order because we would have to identify French citizens with 100% accuracy, and that's not possible. However, the technology is perfectly appropriate for ad targeting purposes. And then Yahoo took the next step. In 1999, it had established a new venture in a new place, the People's Republic of China. When Yahoo first entered the Chinese market, it announced that Yahoo China would give Internet easy access to a range of Yahoo's popular services tailored to meet the needs of this audience. But the Chinese government had its own idea about what its citizens needed. As a condition of market access, it eventually demanded that Yahoo filter materials that might be harmful or threatening to party rule. The Chinese government, in effect, asked Yahoo to serve as Internet censor for the Communist Party. We do not know if there was a long internal debate at Yahoo or whether the company searched its libertarian soul before deciding to go forward. So there you go. There you go. So it's pretty complicated, but um, I think it's worth a listen. Yeah, now that's been out so, for a, a little while. Well, look at it, uh, 24th. A couple of years. A couple, yeah, couple of years. And yeah, six about, hours. A, about a year ago. Year, exactly two years ago today, actually. That's, that's um, oh, there you uncanny. Go. That is very uncanny. So you can get, who controls the internet? Illusions of a borderless world. You can get a free credit uh, to help you get that book. If you, uh, uh, if you go to the aussietechheads.com.au webpage and uh, click on the little Audible link down the bottom. Little picture down there, right down the bottom. And uh, sign up through there. You get a free credit to, uh, and some, some of the books you'll get for free. For, uh, the, so you keep them, you sign up, keep the free credit, the free book, whatever you want, and um, away you go, away you go. And then if you, if you don't want to continue with the subscription, you don't have to. But aussietechheads.com.au and the audible.com link.
Beautiful. Good stuff. All right. Moving on. Good stuff. Moving on. What, what are we moving on to? Did you adjust your volume down, by Mary the way? Harvey. Did you adjust your volume down? Yes, I did. Do you oh. want to turn it up? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, yes, Jerry Harvey. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, good. Jerry Harvey. What's he do? What's he on up board, to? Online, one hundred percent. That's the that's the. Uh, so what is that? That's the uh, headline. What does that mean? He's uh, he, he's closing his stores down. His bricks and mortar. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he, he's, he's the retailer last night. Quietly unveiled HarveyNorman.com.au, allowing customers to buy from its electronics and furniture portfolio online. So there you well, go. How, what, he's, what, he's, you can't beat them, join them. But he has, he, they've had an online uh, presence before. Yeah, but not a store. Yeah, okay. So let's have a look and see. Not a store. Okay, shall we have a look and see what's going on here? Oh, yeah. Go on, look, it's not too bad. It's I, not too bad. I've look, had two. Some of his stuff is still more expensive, but he's got a good selection of products up there. Okay. So he's got the home medics, bathroom scales, tom toms, mobile phones, digital cameras, TVs, PCs, laptops, fridges, printers. Have a look at the TV. Look at that. Look at that Sony there. Go back down. Look at that Sony. 46 inch, 998. Look at that. Hey? Nice TV. How good's that? Nice TV. Beautiful TV. Yeah, so there you go. Good old Harvey. Now, um, what else have I got here? Oh, yeah, did you see this one here? Uh, phone, you can get, you're getting your ticket. You know how you go to a concert and you yeah. buy a ticket? You get the tickets posted to you or you yes. pick them up at the door? Now, yes. for the first time, the ticket Ticketek is sending these tickets to your phone. So you're swiping, you get the picture of the ticket, the, the code up on your screen and swiping that one as you go through everywhere. How does that grab you? So you just hold your phone up? Yes. So you just hold your phone up? Yes, yeah, I've got a picture of it. There it is. You know what, this, believe it or not, this is not new. Um, because if you, for example, got a ticket tech, because they can e they email, you, email your tickets now, right? Yes. And it's PDF. And yeah. on an iPhone, you can resize the size of the ticket and the barcode. Yes. If you showed that PDF on the phone to the ticket tech guy, yep, it would read it. Yeah, right. So it's right. not new, but it's probably making it more friendly. It's sort of resizing without you having to do all the work and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, as the story goes, it's uh, physical tickets are no are being scrapped, but sports fans will now have the option of simply displaying the individual barcode on their smartphone to gain entry. Sports Minister in Queensland here at Suncorp Stadium was the first venue in the state to uh, to introduce the technology in time for this weekend's A League clash between the Broncos and uh, uh, sorry, the Brisbane Roar and the Perth Glory. There you go. Broncos, wrong game. Oh, I know. <laughs> wrong season. They pick up the ball, the handball, offside. <laughs> M-Site, apparently that's what it's all called, will allow fans to purchase tickets via their mobile or online and almost instantaneously have a barcode forwarded to their phone, which is scanned at the entry gate. Uh, where multiple tickets are purchased, barcodes can be forwarded onto your friends. Uh, tickets Tech is expected in the future to roll out similar technology to Skilled Park, just down the road, Dairy Farmers, and the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Yeah, uh, good idea. And they'll still only, they'll only scan once too, by the way, in case you thought you just chucked the phone over yeah. the fence. So, so yeah, so don't, and don't lose your phone. Don't lose your phone. But you, if, right. if you had an but iPhone, it'd be backed up to the cloud. But if you had an iPhone, it'd be backed up to the cloud anyway, yeah. wouldn't it, Eric? Yeah, you should run home, get your iPad, and then hold that up. Yeah. It look like a tool. Or bring your Air down, MacBook Air. Or <laughs> bring, <Yeah>. your <laughs> bring your... Or, Mac or you could just get your Android phone, and by the time you got it worked out, the concert was over a week ago. <laughs> That's right. Have your Android phone and bring your sleeping bag. Oh, look, they're not that bad. It's all yeah. right. I must be just... just 
Look, maybe I need to buy a magazine just to get the right app. I'm sure iPhone has the same problem. You know, like you nah, get the mate. wrong app. But you know that you know that old saying: "It's not me, it's you." But well, you get... guess what? It isn't you. It's the it's <laughs> Android. But you get the wrong app. You know, maybe I'm just not I'm not smart enough to get the right one. But anyway, um, a 15, 15 years. Uh, it's been since Mac has hit the five percent market share on the in the PC. Five point two percent. Five point two percent. They've got five point two. Oh, they're going off, aren't they? So as reported. Oh yeah, it's gone real off. <laughs> as, yeah, but apparently quarter by quarter they're out they're outstripping outrunning the PC. It's just that they're still. It's oh a, yeah. It's, it's just an immense market. Got their margin. Yeah, their margins too. I think. Someone did some statistics some while ago, some weeks ago, and I, I could be wrong about this, but it was something along the lines of Mac. You don't have to sell one Mac to make X amount of dollars. Yeah. And a, some, a Hewlett Packard and Dell and whatnot, some, they have to sell something like eight or nine PCs to get the same amount of dollars. Yeah, right. Profit. Yep. That'd be so, right. You know. So if you do that by percentage, by multiples, if it's uh, if they are, if if Dell have to sell eight computers to one Mac to get the same, let's call it hundred dollar profit. Yes. And Mac uh, Mac have got five percent. Eight times five percent. Mac Macs have got forty percent of the total dollar profit of the industry, mm. even mm. though they've only got five percent. Yes. Of the actual buy unit. Yeah. Dollar value, they've gotten probably forty to fifty percent of the dollar value from mm. it. Yeah. Which is which is pretty smart. Yes, yes. Oh, there's no doubt they're making money. No doubt, no doubt at all. Um, did you have any other stories? And then I think we we've got the, the guest is coming on. The guest of oh, which guest? <laughs> the head the head's up soon. The head. The head's up. No, hang on. I'm hang on, I'll just through my Oz post. I'll just throw I've got something at Jerry the wall. Harvey's. Hang on, I just got to throw something at the wall. I'll get him out of here. Head, get out of here. You're on. Head, out of here. All right, what are you up to? He's coming out. Right here. <laughs> so you've done your Jerry Harvey's. I've done my Jerry Harvey's. You've done all your other stuff. I've done, done the NBN. Yep. And I've done uh, whatever you call it there. All right. Well. Good. <laughs> what are you doing so. fiddling with your knobs? But anyway, it's the head is arrived and the head is here. Hello. Can I'm you back. Hear me still? The head's back. The head is back. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Come in, Eric. I good. can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, good guy. Look at the ugly head. <laughs> I can hear you. All right. Hello. This is the head. You get the better experience, obviously, if you watch the YouTube. But anyway, um, we've, got a, we've got a question. Got a question here, Brett from Illawarra. Hi, Head. I have a. Oh, did you, did you want to read the question for me, or have you got it? I can. I, yeah, I've got it. Hang on a second. I'll bring it up. It's which one's this from? This is this is the Hi, from Brett. Okay, one. here we go. Here we go. Hi, Head. Uh, I, I think he, he he missed the D dot Head. Hi, D dot Head. I have a three G wireless connection to the internet. I have a PlayStation 3 and want to play it online. How can I set this up? Head, I think you are the best liar. <laughs> He's not lying. And I know by the immense size of your head that you have a lot going on. Now, before you answer this question, can I just suggest that anyone playing games online with a 3G wireless um, dongle is going to get a massive shock on their bill? Uh, well, it depends what type of game. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do they uh, take a lot of uh, bandwidth? Do they? Games? Yeah. God, yeah. They're in. They're one oh one oh eighty one oh seven twenty p minimum. But don't they just send like just, just the stats to like where you are in the game and and what you're actually doing? Like you're not like downloading the you whole game and playing it, hey? But no, but you've got to access the graphics on on your screen. You're watching the graphics and all the rendering. That takes up bandwidth. Yeah, but wouldn't I don't know. I thought I thought that would have just been coming off your local machine, and all that's coming over the internet is just no. your your um. Well, not no, not these days. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, not, well, it's all. If that's the if case, if it's not, well, it depends. If he's on Steam, it's online. Then he's in trouble. 
if it's local, it might be a different story. Right. Well, he's got his PlayStation. He's three, by the sounds of it. So I reckon... So obviously, he wants to set it up through wireless. So he'll have to go and buy a wireless... A uh, 3G w- little wireless router thing. That's the first thing. And he'll have yes. to set it up through there. Um, so, I don't know. you probably get one of them for... I think you go down to, like, Virgin or Inter- uh, uh, Virgin or wherever. Vodafone, 80 bucks or something. Telstra. Telstra. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, Telstra. Yeah. So we've got we've got uh, the lounge. Got some of the ADS, some ADSL modems have got three G um, capacity for backup for redundancy. Yeah. So you can buy a normal ADSL two modem and just throw your three G dongle at the back of it. Yeah, because I know like even with the the Telstra Next G little wireless thing I've got, this is what I've got. This little this little fella, the little Telstra thing. Yeah, like even with the little Telstra thing, it's um like it's ping. Is is just about better than my ADSL, and the speeds, its upload speeds are better than my ADSL. So um, so oh that, yeah, so they and go the, all right. And the four G ones are even better. Hmm. Yeah, and oh, we've got here rumor in the lounge wireless routers, three G USB uh, failover port, sixty nine bucks. So there you go, just one of those little fellas. That's all you there need. You That's all you need, um, Mister B from Illawarra. And uh, that's, right. that's the only that's the only question I picked out this week, because um, okay. look, there's a load of questions, but they, some of them take just too long to answer, I think, and some are a bit complicated. But look, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll try I'll sift through them, and um, we'll try and put them in some sort of order, and and try and produce them as tips or something each week. But while the head's here, I've uh, the head uh, uh, the head's been requisitioned to do a follow up on an email. Now, uh, follow up. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, we got an email. Jeff, Jeff, hi, Jeff from Chuggington. He's had a PC and it died, and he bought a Mac. Do you remember that guy? Yep. So he yep. had. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> and so he had a PC, bought a Mac, yep, blah blah blah. Yep. So um, anyway, he's um, he's be, his PC's come back to life. It's been resurrected. Like, it's how the, do you do that? It's the second coming or something, you know. The, who knows? Who knows how it happens? But um, but anyway, where's his his email here? Um, yeah, for some reason, when it rebooted, the hard drive was shown as disabled. There you go. It was BIOS. Was BIOS a, was screwed. It was a BIOS problem. Um, he's fixed the new settings. Could be. Board. Could be. Or the battery. Well, you know what I reckon. I reckon his hard drive plates are starting to go, and they just needed a bit of a rest. And if he boots it up and he starts using it again and keeps it on and it starts getting hot. The plates will start sticking, and it'll he'll lose it again. Yeah. So he's um, he said he had a few settings about everything is sweet. I'll get a, a solid state drive tomorrow and clone off C onto it. So okay. So that's he sorted out there. But his main question this week was uh, c- uh, for the show is can I clone it and put that Windows file on the Mac? Oh, now that's a that's a, that's the one that I wouldn't say that you could do. I would uh, advise against that. I don't think you would be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, I'd say mainly. Uh, you saw you saw my answer, I think, before. Yeah, look, you, you that c- question. Yeah, look, pretty much, even between uh, PCs, it's not successful with as and between PCs, I mean between an Intel run run PC and an AMD run PC, you can't really do that. Yeah. Windows just doesn't like it, yeah. and I would highly doubt that it would like it to uh, transport itself to a Mac. I don't think it happened. Yeah. Um, Specs are different. It, 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 yeah, it, it, totally, you, yeah. you just crash your Mac. Yeah, yeah. Even though the Macs are Intel, I just don't think it'll work. Uh, but why not just just reload Windows up into the into your Mac? What do you use? Every Boot Camp or something? Uh, well, first the, it comes with Mac on it, right? So then they come. Then you get a disk, and on the disk is Boot Camp. So you put the disk in, you run Boot Camp, run through the settings about three clicks, not eleven. Um, then you just uh, Follow the instructions, it's pretty easy enough. Then you put your Windows disk in, and that installs it on the boot camp partition. You, you tell the boot camp how big you want the Windows partition to be. So if you've got a 500 gigs, you might allocate 150 gig to boot camp for Windows. And then you uh, install Windows, and then you reboot the Mac, and you, keep, you press the Alt key when you're rebooting, and, it, and then you can pick whether you want to go into the Mac operating system or the Windows operating system. 
Right. And, that's, and that, then off you go. Yeah, I think you ha- you're going to make yourself make life a lot easier if you just do just install a clean Windows and just transfer your files across. I think you you will save and yourself. And just remember, grief. boys and girls, just remember, boys and girls, the best PC for Windows 7 is actually a Mac. So. <laughs> well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But he also. No, it is. Trust me, it is. <laughs> it screams. Windows 7 on a Mac screams. Yeah, right. Okay. But he's also had another little question. Um, what sort of UPS do you guys recommend? Well, I don't know. I would don't know if I actually recommend a UPS, but uh, the one that I, w- uh, I have actually just bought is an Upsonic. And there's uh, look like one of them there. That might just be a power board, though. But this one there. And um, look, up, up, uh, um, UPSs are good. Uninterrupted power supplies are good. Uh, the one that I've got is if there is a power supply, if there is a power cut... Um, there's enough power in the machine and it talks to Windows and if it feels that there's a cut, it uh, actually sends the shutdown to the computers. So they just close down normally. 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 So you don't lose any data. But that's good. But if you go to the upsonic.com.au website, the upsonic.com.au website, uh, you'll see a calculator and that will help you decide what, how, what power UPS that you need. Because there's different different powers, you know how long they last, or how many things you got plugged into them, how many things you want to get shut down. So go to the uh, upsonic.com.au, get the power, do the power rating thing, and uh, Bob's your uncle. There you go, good stuff. All right, this is the head good signing stuff. out. The head the head is going back to his lair because it's warmer. So, <laughs> oh, the head will see everyone next week. <laughs> see you, the head. You're a massive, massive. He head. is that. That head is out of control, isn't he? Is that head out of control? He he's, is out of control. He's, yeah, he's gone. He is a crime. Gonski. He is one crazy head. All right. Well, I think that's just about does us. Are you are you done, Eric? <laughs> I am done. <laughs> done like a dinner. I am done. I Put a fork in me. I'm done. Yes, and, and probably just at about time too because I think we've, we're having a few uh, de- audio delay issues. and uh, So probably just about yes. time. That's why Eric's been a bit, um, uh, what would you say, a bit um, aloof in the last 10 minutes, I would say. So he, he's, not, he, he's not just sitting back reading a book and ignoring the head. He, I think he's just having delay issues. But anyway, that's the show for tonight. So thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Uh, thanks to everyone in the lounge, live.thesecrethub.com. And uh, YouTube, watch the YouTube, have a look at the head, uh, go to YouTube, just give it a couple of clicks. We're trying to get the get the viewers on the YouTube up a bit, you know, languishing <laughs> down right down the bottom. So we'd like to get some get some viewers, as many as the podcast, that'd be great. Watch it on the TV, watch it through the 3G, watch it any way you can, just make sure you watch it. All right. So until next week, just get us on the on the on the podcast if you can't do it on the YouTube. All right. Till next week. See you guys in the lounge. See you, Eric, and get well soon. Will. Bye bye. Chewing the fat up next. Oh, we got about that. I've got to write that.